All right, I'm making another video. I'm going to post this one, I guess, my other phone, for whatever reason, I can't tap into YouTube. But I was watching something on the news today. Very disturbing, very disturbing. Um, here in St. Louis, we have a problem. We have a bus driver shortage. And it's been going on for a while. And stuff like this is funny. It's like, I don't understand the politics of things, but I try to listen so I can understand and look up stuff. But it's sad. They have, they don't have a bus, they have a bus driver shortage. So they're trying to talk about giving the kids passes to catch the public transportation and do this, that, and the other. Nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that they have bus drivers. They just don't want to pay people enough money. And they're like, oh, it's $20 an hour. But if you start thinking about it, if you talk to anybody who drives a school bus, you get paid for driving the bus. So you pick the kids up, drop the kids off, then take them back home. That's when you're getting paid. Then you do the same thing again. So that calculates into about four hours, maybe five hours. And it's not even $100 a day. Instead of saying, hey, let's just break this down, do a day rate and get the right people in the right positions to do that, they could actually make money and have a whole thing going. But we choose not to do that. I feel like as far as schools go, schools lunches, a lot of things should just be straight up taken care of by the government. Because we have tons of money floating around. Tons of individuals have money, companies have money. And it's, it's very disheartening to see. There is money, but it's one of those things, the money goes to where people want the money to go to. So I feel like we need to throw the politicians out and I think there should be a band of people that are incredibly wealthy that just say, hey, let's get together and fund stuff because I think that's just the right thing to do. Because in my opinion, this is just my opinion, and some people might hate it, there's nobody, there's no one individual that should be worth a flipping billion dollars. It makes zero sense. It's more money than anyone could ever spend, even if they had a terrible drug problem or gambling habit. It's just a tremendous amount of money. And typically when people are that wealthy, they're not using their own money to buy stuff anyway. Maybe their own personal stuff, their house, but they're not using it for business. They're not using it to, hey, let me buy that whole neighborhood and change the way it looks. They're using it for their, their own thing. So I feel like, you know, obviously we can't tax the super rich because the super rich run politics and they are politics. But I think it's morally for us to look inside of ourselves and say, how much better can we do? I'm not saying let's start a GoFundMe or something. Because typically the people that put money into GoFundMes and are somewhat charitable or normal people that probably make between $30,000 and $100,000 a year. They're not people that make tremendous amounts of money because one, one of those people just come along and say, hey, here's $5 million. Let's just shut it down so we can do this. I think it's just the regular everyday people that do that. But I think this is a call for people that do have a bit more of anyone sees this to start doing something bigger because forget buying a $2 million fuck flipping Bugatti. Forget living in a $4 million house, whether you live in St. Louis or spending $200 million on a house in LA. It's ridiculous. There are people out here that need things and life for some people becomes very unfair. I, I've spent a little time in jail, not a lot of time, but I met a lot of people. If a dude knew he had an 80 or $90,000 job to go back, a year job to go back to, you think he's gonna be out there selling cocaine? You think he's gonna be selling crack? You think he's gonna be selling weed? No, but the thing is our society's kind of predicated on, not even so black and white anymore, it's the haves and the have nots, who has and who doesn't. And the sad thing about that is that when you have, you just no longer care, <laughs> you know? And when you do start to have, no longer is that other problem your problem. And there's an old saying, and I'd like to kind of repeat this. I got gel on my hands, and his little hair. Anyway, um, yeah, you know what? Am I my brother's keeper? I say no, but I say yes. Because inherently, if we do kind of what is quote unquote the right thing, all of our lives become a little bit easier. But if we do whatever is advantageous to us and not the right thing, well, we might have a bit more and it sucks to be somebody else. But uh, when you're, sometimes you're on the other, other end of that, it's kind of silly. But then sometimes you're on this other end where you're just kind of watching the world unfold. And that's where I feel like I sit sometimes. I watch the world unfold. Yes, I'm very much part of this world and I want to do whatever I can and more for him, for humanity. But it's like, it's just the fact that so many people are just so flipping selfish, me included, because a lot of times people, once you get the full, the dinner table full, you're just concerned about you. And you know, well, you know, George Michael said in his song once, charity is a coat you wear twice a year. Some people do a little something, they feel like that's it. And a lot of other people say, well, unless so-and-so is not doing it or doing it, I'm not doing it. I, they're paying all this and I'm not, and I'm, my net worth is going down. And I don't know, well, there's just got to be a point where we just say, hey, let's just, let's have a ceiling on wealth. Let's have a ceiling on this. Also, we should have a, 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 a ground basement on poverty. We have too much food in this country for people to be hungry i've worked in so many places and it's amazing the food that goes to waste in these giant places event spaces 
uh, places where they have ball games, uh, hockey arenas, it's, it's soccer. It is just, it's sickening. We have enough food for everybody. And if we fed everybody, it's something that could totally be done. I'm not saying everybody's got to stand up outside of a hockey stadium or a baseball stadium after every game and get fed. But there's plenty of food. And I think we just have this thing in America where we're all about excessiveness. More, 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 more. There's the law commercial here. And it's like, more and more and more and more and more. And it, you know, there's a fairness. And there's a point where we just become fat and flipping greedy. So I think this is a message for us, whomever sees this. You know, how much is enough? And how can we use whatever it is we have, whether it's our voices, whether it's our time, whether it's some cash money, to solve the problems of the world? Because this can easily be remedied, but you realize the word of the day, again, is willingness. And you'll find a lot of people, especially in that position, do not care to be willing because it's advantageous for them to be at the top of the food chain. It's like, well, if I help somebody else out, well, maybe they'll become, you know, I'm the I'm the T-Rex, but maybe the Indominus Rex will become real and uh, they're trying to eat me. And so instead of just looking at it like, let's all try to make this better together, it's, you know, it's better than things that really are. I don't know. This is a kind of food for thought. I'm just long stroking. It's going back to the bus drivers. They just have to pay people better. But there's got to be more money. And I don't know why there isn't because there's plenty of money because money doesn't even exist anymore. Money's like it doesn't exist. You go to places now, they're cashless. Every place is cashless. And believe it or not, there's a card that you, you swipe or chip or touch against something. And the numbers just fly up in space real quick, and they fly back down and gives you a check or an X. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Why can't everybody just have a card that just says you're okay? That just sounds crazy, right? But it could be a real thing. Since money's not real, and since no one wants to use cash anymore, and businesses are taking it out, it's just something that just says yes or no. Look, if there's something in, in, the, something in the system that says you got paid, and I got paid, and everybody got paid, and we could afford this and vote for that, It'd be like, huh, but at the end of the day, you realize that for someone else to keep their, their, their feet metaphorically on your neck, that's what happens. But I mean, at the end of the day, money's not real. This is like, we're just being helped up by duct tape and a dream. So let's just try to get real. Let's help each other. Let's get these kids to school. Let's get people eating. No one should be homeless because there's nobody that should ever be have, there should never be a property that costs $200 million. There shouldn't be a penthouse that costs $200 million. There shouldn't be. These things are all just made up. And when some idiot pays for it, it's like going to an auction and seeing a pillow. Hey, this pillow, uh, you know, you got it for 50, you know, $5. You go to some auction and say so-and-so had it and tell a great story, starts bidding off at, you know, $200. If someone finds value in that they want to spend $200 and some idiot, other idiot wants to outbid them, that's how you have these pricing wars. And that's how society is. That's how, they, that's what interest is. It's bizarre. This isn't even real. Once you... Think about it economically, it's not real. And I know there's some people sit there, and if anybody ever watches this that does anything politically or whatever, everyone, I like to say this, and this is a very true statement, everyone's not always going to tell you what you can't do and what's not possible. Very few people are going to tell you, oh, that's doable. Oh, you know what? That makes sense. That is possible. Everybody's just telling you that. Why? Because they're probably on the other side and they're benefiting from these crazy, stupid things, or this just the society, and that's the system we've made up, and we just kind of abide by these rules. Who's to say what's what? They talk about the Constitution. That was made X amount of years ago, right? When you came up with the Constitution, did someone think, hey, one day you're going to have these things you keep in your pocket. They're called phones, and they can make phone calls. You can talk to somebody around the world in a second. You can look up information in, in a split second. No, no, no th th this was a dream. No one thought... Hey, there's going to be this thing called an airplane that flies around. So that's a little archaic. And I feel like sometimes in order to change the world, it's imperative that we take a step out and reinvent the wheel. You know, guns and stuff like that. You can have your guns. Let's reinvent it. Uh, uh, not everybody has the right to bear arms. And typically people that have licenses on guns are not the ones doing dumb stuff. And no one's really going to speak out on gun control because a lot of people make a tremendous amount of money on selling guns, on selling bullets, on making weapons, things that eventually are just going to kill all of us. How, how funny is that? I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. But I think it's for us to, to try to dig a little bit deeper and be better people just because we should. Because I've said this in jobs. If you go into a job and maybe you're in some sort of management leadership role, my job is to make sure everybody else is okay. And all of a sudden, you make sure they're okay. You take care of your guests. You take care of your people that you work with front of the house, back of the house, any part of that house, you take care of that, keeping it clean, keeping it nice. 
you start to change the culture in that place and all of a sudden things become a little bit easier because all of a sudden people see you working hard and doing stuff and maybe they want to do things just a little bit better not a lot just a little bit but everybody adding an extra 2.5 to 5 percent more oh my god everything's just better and it's easier and at that point in time we can get everything together then we can evolve but we choose not to because i don't know what we're afraid of or the powers that be are afraid of you keep people running scared we're all flapping around in water you know no one's swimming i don't care if i'm swimming I like the idea of swimming. Even if I'm swimming and I look up, I'm like swimming into a whirlpool that's eventually going to kill me or take me someplace else. At least I spent time swimming and not flailing around. You know, I just, just we got to stop it being so wasteful. We have to start taking care of each other. And I think it's a charge for all of us. Because, I mean, a lot of people want to see it, but a lot more people probably don't want to see it. Because if things worked out and we kind of got along and the chemicals and stuff like that, weren't as bad and the substance abuse issues and the fentanyl and the heroin and the alcoholism and all that shit wasn't so bad and the drunk driving and the murderers and the, you know, all this other stuff and the conspiracies and the plots, a lot of people would probably just be out of work or maybe they'd be in a much better place to do exactly what they want to do in life. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to call this video. I probably have like 10 views. Anyway, if you can, if I can, let's just try to do better. Let's help. Let's just do something. Just do something. And if anybody out there has a lot of money, try, challenge your other friends. Instead of saying, hey, I'm going to go out and take this crazy trip or buy this crazy expensive house. I, if I have money, the moment I do, I'm always going to charge myself and test myself. With this. I'm going to go out and drop, you know, $100,000 on a car, which I feel like I'd probably never do, even though I like real nice cars. They're just numbers that are just ridiculous. Um, I'm going to spend that same amount or a little more on helping other people before I can do that. It's like going to the casino. If I can't afford to tip the dealer, even if I'm losing... If I can't afford to tip the cage girls, even when I get my money back from losing, guess what? I can't afford to go. So you want to play? Play. And let, if, you see, if you see something, just do something. And charge other people. Like, hey, you know what? This is what I'm doing. Because metaphorically, sometimes we know how big our dicks are. Now, do you got it or you don't?